So why is MFA best practice? And so I think of MFA as a way to prevent. So if someone's trying to, as Rob pointed out, go after passwords and get into your login, that's definitely a prevention mechanism. There's also another uh, concept there that's essentially stopping the spread of an attack. So if someone's gotten into systems or into credentials, um, a way to set up additional gates and additional requirements and levels of security for them to be able to continue to access systems and, and spread across systems, right? That's why we're seeing things like zero trust and least privilege and all these types of architectures that say you should be making sure that nothing's trusted until it's verified. Um, and then I think there's an interesting component coming out with consumers, us, right? My Uber driver on the way here asked me about ransomware, um, <laughs> which is starting to happen. Um, and it's a sense of trust um, with citizens accessing online systems or any of us doing that. Um, I'm starting to look at that as a way to say, hey, this is a trusted source. They're worried about your data, your privacy. Um, and so there's really that human element and, and trust word that's coming in there as well.